Hey lovelies, welcome to another episode of Stella Damasis Diaries. How are you doing? I'm Stella Damasis and I'm your host. Okay, <laughs> you already know that. Oh, today I want to talk about something that a lot of people wish they knew before they got married. And um, these things, these things would really, really help those of you who are engaged, who are planning to get married, who want to know the real facts. So are you asking the right questions? Are you asking the right questions before you say I do? Don't go anywhere because you want to know. All right. I'll be right back. She's so beautiful. Welcome back. So I asked a question in the beginning and I said, um, are you asking the right questions before you say I do? A lot of people, even me, there are some things that I wish I had asked about or I knew about or had um, inquired about before I got married and um, moving forward. It would have helped me. It would have made things easier. It would have made things faster. But thank God. So my older sister, Sylvia, she's a lawyer. And thankfully, she's one of my columnists, you know, for the Adiva magazine. And my sixth edition is out, by the way. She has this column called Lady Law. And for each edition, she writes things that people should know about rights, especially about women's rights. I, I talk about women's rights a lot because I'm a woman, first of all. I'm African and I'm interested in everything woman. <laughs> so she ha she was teaching me about a lot of things that we hardly pay attention to, especially as African women, before getting into a marriage. So she said, first of all, a lot of people think they know the meaning of next of kin. When they say next of kin, you, people think it's an automatic thing, but it's not. You know, she said, learn it, understand what it is, understand the definition of next of kin. You might, you might, you notice that I'm holding this because I don't want to make a mistake. There are specific things legally that she's been teaching me that I want to share with everybody because it has helped me. I understand a lot of things now. There are some mistakes I will never make again. Never make again. You hear me? <laughs> so that's why I'm holding this so that I'm very sure of what I'm saying. So she says, understand the meaning of next of kin. Understand property law. Now, nobody is saying go and buy big, big books or start um, learning law by force. No, but there are just some basic things that you need to understand about property and ownership of property, especially as a married woman. The types of documentation that you're supposed to get, how your name is supposed to be on it. You should know these things. It's not that hard. A lot of people say, I beg, all these law, all these legal terms. No, they are simple, simplified. You can actually sit with a lawyer. And just say, please, just explain these things to me so I understand before I get into a marriage. You should also understand the different types of bank accounts. So a lot of people only know, oh, savings and the uh, checking account. That's it. Some people know joint account, personal account, this business account, that, 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 that. There are different types of accounts that couples should have. A lot of people have joint account and that's it. Nehi, nehi, nehi. We don't do that anymore. OK, now she I, I was shocked at the kind of things that she was saying, because we take a lot of things for granted. And I said I was going to try as much as possible to break them down as simply as I can, because these things have helped me. I have had the opportunity to speak to a lot of women, divorced, separated widows, because I've been a widow. I've been divorced. I've been separated. I've been through it all. Name it. <laughs> I've been there, done that. So a lot of people come to me to ask me for my opinion based on my experience, you know, what I know, things that I've done, how I was able to get out of a lot of things and all that. So when I speak to a lot of these women, it breaks my heart to see the conditions that they live in now, to see how life has turned everything around for them, to see how painful things are for them, you know, they're suffering. A lot of them can't even claim anything. A lot of them have been kicked out, marginalized, dealt with because they have no rights. 
they didn't have proper documentation that would protect them and sometimes their children. A lot of things that we don't pay attention to. At the end of the day, God forbid, something goes wrong, you get separated or you get divorced or there's a loss of spouse and you have just there, out there. Then families come, they want to divide property, they want to take this, they want to take that, they want to chase you out, and then you're there begging for food, you and your children, you don't have a home to live, you don't have, not any more. Okay? Not anymore. People don't do that anymore. Before I continue, let me just say this. For the longest, I actually thought that, and like a lot of people, especially Christians like me, we actually thought that, oh, before you get married, go for your marriage counseling. And for us, marriage counseling was in church. We only dealt with spiritual counseling. But after studying with my sister she put me through a lot of things asked me a lot of questions and i realized and also in the course of my studying you know marriages relationships and all of that because i do coaching too i realized that there are four different types of counseling that every couple should have okay not just spiritual spiritual is there but there are so many things that a spiritual counseling cannot teach you or tell you there are so many questions that they can't answer for you in church let us be honest i'm a christian to the core but guess what i've been to marriage counseling in church and they didn't tell me a lot of things a lot of aspects of a marriage honestly and these are things you should know one apart from your spiritual uh, marriage counseling you must have a financial counselor you must talk to someone who would explain certain things to you about finances about the kind of accounts that you should have for different types of bills, different types of things that you would meet along the way. You must understand that. If there's any life insurance policy, whatever it is, you must have a counselor. If one of you spends more than the other, if one understands saving money more than the other or how to invest or something more than the other, you have to talk to a financial counselor so that you know who, to, to, who will handle certain things and then you, if you're not one to understand a lot of things about policies, banking, this and that documentation, talk to a financial counselor that will tell you what to do in a very simple way. You need it. You need to know where the money is going, where it is coming from, where it is going, how to sp split it, how to make sure you have enough to save for this, save for that and save for that. Some people save for only one thing, retirement, but you save for retirement for different things. There's a, an account for education. There's one for emergencies when it comes to health and all of that. A financial counselor has to help you. You can't do it on your own if you don't have that background, unless you're a financial person. Second one, you have to have legal counseling. Your legal advisor has to explain to you what your rights are in your marriage when it comes to property, when it comes to money, when it comes to insurance, when it comes to anything documentation that has to do with next of kin or putting your children's name here or anything. Some people want to go into prenups. I'm not opposed to that. People who want to do it just understand what it means. And it all depends on the kind of person that you're marrying. If you don't know any of these things, please, before you get into any marriage, ask questions. People have entered trouble. Number three, you need a health advisor. You need a psychological, because a lot of people carry baggage into their marriages. Some people carry trauma into their marriages and don't even know. Some people have been traumatized from childhood. They've had childhood issues that they haven't dealt with. Some people have gone through things that they probably don't, even, don't understand, but they know that something is off somewhere mood swings, mood changes, you know, things like that. Snapping easily, one moment you're this, the next moment you're that. And then they keep saying, oh, that's how she is, don't worry, she'll, she, she'll be all right, she'll calm down. No, 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 check it, check it. You also need to know how to handle someone. If you, if you have a spouse that has issues with, you know, controlling temper, controlling anger or something, anger management or something, that is the time before you marry that you decide whether it's something you can handle or not. You need to deal with all of these things. Lastly, you have to visit a Mrs. Coach. Mrs. Coach is not just women because you hear Mrs. No. It means marriage, relationship, and sex. Your financial advisor, your legal advisor, 
Your psychological advisor is not the one that will talk to you about sex. And trust me, your spiritual counselor in church, marriage counselor, is not the one that will talk to you about sex because there are some things that some people like and their partners don't like. Some things that their partners cannot do, but that's what their partners want. You need somebody that will be able to help in that area because you see this relationship and sex matter, it has caused a lot of issues for a lot of couples and marriage breaking down, down the line, and they don't know where it all stemmed from. Trust me, these things that I've mentioned to you, you need to pay attention to them, okay? Don't let it pass you by, <laughs> but don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Welcome back. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about questions that you should ask and things that you should do before you say, I do, before you get married. And I said that spiritual counseling in the church, marriage counseling in the church is not, is not the only thing that you need as a couple. You need legal, you need financial, you need health. Okay. And then you need, what was the last one I said? Mrs. Marriage, relationship, and sex. Because there are some things that a financial counselor cannot teach you. Same with a legal counselor, cannot teach you. There's something. So you need all of that. You might think, oh, that's a lot. What am I going to do? You need it because you want your marriage to be built on a solid foundation. You want to understand everything before you get into it. Because when you get into it, you have to be prepared. Anything can happen at any time. Okay, so one of the most important things that my sister taught me, because I was talking about my sister earlier, she's a lawyer. She was like, when you're, when you're doing a document, maybe property, and you want to, you know, do your documentation for ownership. Um, and then the, the owner of the place says, okay, buy this thing, let's sign. And they say the house um, has been sold too. A lot of people make that mistake and do Mr. and Mrs. Let's say um, um, Brahma. Let's use, no, let's use Ibrahim. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Ibrahim. As, as the owners of the property, which is supposed to be you and your husband. But do you know that if anything goes wrong and they take you to court, anybody can be Mrs. Ibrahim and come and claim that you are not part owner to that house. Any woman whose surname or whose husband's name is Ibrahim can claim ownership of that house. You should never allow anybody to use Mr. and Mrs. this. No, it should be, for example, Mr. Michael and Felicia Ibrahim, Mr. Nathaniel and Bisola Ibrahim. Your first name must be there. That is what differentiates you from somebody else. That is the only way you can win if there's any case or if there's any argument about real ownership of the property or the land or whatever it is. Because Mr. or Mrs., those are titles. They don't hold up in court. Your name is what is more important. So be protected. Protect yourselves. And then add your children's names. We don't pray for anything bad to happen. But legally, they'll tell you, in the event of this, if this happens, nobody's praying for anything bad. But in the world we live in today, we have to be protected because we've seen too much. We've experienced too much for us to understand that these things are very, very important. Put your name, make sure your name is there. Your first name before your last name is present in the document. Your children's name must be present in the document. Another important thing, a lot of women think that when there's a, a documentation that has next of kin, they, they expect that automatically their spouses will put their names as next of kin. I have seen cases where men, even women, put their sibling as next of kin. I've seen where people put their mothers, even their best friends, as next of kin. But the spouse is sitting there thinking, he or she, sitting there thinking, oh, when it comes to next of kin, let him or her fill the form, they'll put me. It's not always like that. You have to know if you are next of kin or not. Because anything goes wrong and you are not next of kin, you don't have much rights. You don't really have a say. Again, another thing is, I've noticed that a lot of people, especially women, a lot of women who have joint accounts with their spouses, the men will always have 
their own separate account. There's no man. I need you to show me. <laughs> I need someone out there to prove me wrong and show me a man that has a joint account with his wife and doesn't have any other account in his name. Show me one. It's not possible. I want to see that man that has no other account apart from the joint account he has with his wife. But guess what? 30 or 40% of women in Africa who own joint accounts with their husband don't have a personal account. Dif different reasons. I've asked, I've done research, several reasons. Some is a lack of education. Some, they didn't even open the joint account. It's the man that opened it for both of them. Because he keeps, because sometimes a lot of women, we relegate, we just decide to, you know, leave that aspect of life and financial things and all of that to the man, which is understandable because I used to do it a lot. Like, oh, he knows more about all those things, all those documentation, numbers, things like that. You worry about that. Let me worry about other things. I know. And I'm not blaming anybody because it's happened to me too. But we have to get to the point where we understand the basics. Even if we're not the ones feeling it, you want to see it. Don't leave anything to chance and expect that everything is okay. A lot of women made that mistake and God forbid something happened. Something did happen. And then when it came to, okay, so who owns what? This property, oh, we're coming to take this, we're coming to take that. You find that the woman is crying and begging. Oh, and I say, no, you don't own anything. Did you see the documentation? Did you see this? No, you have to go to court and fight. You have to go and fight for a letter of administration. A lot of women don't even know the meaning of letter of administration. We just leave things to chance. Things are not the way they used to be. Our parents' generation and the generation before theirs, they just get married. They just get into their husband's house. They're okay. You know, they're taking care of, they have children. They just live their lives. But now, now, things are happening. Things are changing. Because before, a man will, you know, pass away. And then the siblings or the family or the uh, members of his uh, family, where, wherever they come from, they just come from anywhere. And they come, they want to take property. In fact, the woman now becomes property. Sometimes in, in some cultures, they give the woman to the man's brother, the, the late man's brother as wife, as part of what he has earned. I'm like, but nowadays things have changed. We are more educated, we are more enlightened, and we are saying that women are human beings. We have rights too. You labored with this man, you grew with him, you were there for him, you, have, you had his children, everything was going on while he's not with you anymore. I'm not even talking about, talking about just, you know, loss of life. What about people who get divorced? You want to be prepared. You want to know that if anything goes wrong, your children will be taken care of. You want to know that there are things in place for your children. You have to. It's something that we need to start understanding and learning. Nobody goes into a marriage or a union and just starts to expect, ah, as I marry now, this man might die or this woman might just die. Or no, he might just leave me or she might just leave me. No, we don't go in there expecting that that will happen or hoping that that will happen. No. But in the event of what happens, it's reality. We live in a world where things are not as rosy as we would have wanted them to be. Things are happening every day. Crazy things. You go on the internet, you go on social media, you read the news. Everywhere you turn, something is going wrong with people, especially marriages. Whilst we pray religiously to God, to help preserve our marriages, preserve our homes, preserve everything. God also gave us a brain to learn and understand how things work because wherever you are, you have to respect the laws of the land, but you need to know the law before you respect it. So these are some little things that I'm hoping that if any woman out there or any man out there hears some of these terms that I've been using, some of these things I've been saying, these are things that you need to look into. Look into it, not just for yourself, for the sake of your children. They need to be taken care of. They need to be protected. And we have to know the difference, okay? Um, these are a lot of things that I wished that I learned before even getting into marriage. Because I married very early. I got married to my late husband when I was, what, 21? Oh, I was so young and naive. I didn't know anything. But thank God now we know better and we're helping people out there to understand how these things work so they're not confused if, if anything comes up. Because if nothing comes up, then you don't need to worry about anything, but just know it. 
Just learn it. Just understand it. At least understand it. Just so that if anything goes wrong, you're not. What do I do? Oh my goodness. What do I do? You have everything. And make sure you know where the documents are. Make sure you know the property that your spouse has. Know it. Okay? Not just for you. For your kids. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Beautiful. Welcome back. Um, I know I said a lot. <laughs> a lot of people will be like, what, what, what are all these things? What are all these things? But these are things that, you know, I feel like people should pay attention to. It's very important that we understand these things, you know, because anything can happen. We're not praying for it, but if it does, a lot of women are going through so much. It hurts me, it breaks my heart because they don't even know. When I mentioned stuff to them, when I asked them, did you sign this before or was your name added to this? Or are you the next of kin? Why are you in this situation? They're like, next of kin, was I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to know that? I don't, I don't know. There's information out there. There's help out there. And I feel that everyone has a right to know what they're entitled to. Okay? You have to know. But remember, it's not who people say you are. It's who God says you are. I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching. She's so beautiful.